But no, we're trying to get a little more out of the hug, you know? Yeah, no, me and that girl were, uh, like, off. I had to hang on and off, but... It's so yeah, no, it's, it's super funny, dude. Oh, my God. But she, I was like, I was like, oh, are you gonna sleep here tonight? And she's like, no, I'm going home. And I was like... Oh, yeah, you're like, oh, well. Because that was my friend's, that was my homie's bad. Well, was, here's a long hug to go. Yeah, let me grab the back of your head, kiss you on the cheek, you know, one foot of the road. <laughs> she loved it. You just came from the fucking gym? Yeah, dude. Nice. Look, it's swole or what? You're looking less zombie and uh, well well slept right now, I will say. I know, that. I haven't drank in, in two days. Dude, it's That's why. <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna I was have zombie boy. Bender, I was thinking dude. I was gonna have zombie boy in my show, and here comes. Fuck I know it. I should have just for the just for the <laughs> the visual perspective. We can still put black makeup on your eyes. I definitely have some Louis bag, there. Louis V or LV tatted. <laughs> Louis bag. Check out these Louis, Louis V handbags bag, Gucci bag. by Seth Madera. Dude, my friend actually has a Gucci bag, like a big Gucci duffel bag. Dude, I just have a big duffel bag with cherries all over it. Really? It costs one buck at the thrift store. I love thrift shopping. Gucci bags, dude. The only way a white guy would get Gucci bags is if he liked hip hop. What'd be another reason, dude? Because he that heard whole... it. He's he's programmed by hip hop, man. Like Gucci bag, Porsche car, Cayenne, yeah, yeah, dude. Cayenne I agree. Tampon. I think I don't know, dude. I think people just like to flex, and that's like why they get that shit. Like, what am I gonna use a Gucci duffel bag for? I don't even use my duffel bag that I have at home that I think somebody just left in my house that I've been using for the last six years. But it years. is sick once you, I mean, once you, it's so funny how like hip hop is responsible for so much like designer wear being popular. Yeah. They shouldn't even call it designer anymore. They should call it trail. Rap, rap wear? Rap trail wear. <laughs> rap trail wear. Which is basically the reason why people put tin foil and fucking on their teeth on Halloween. Oh, is that what the, is that a thing? Right? Yeah. But no, when people they, actually go get grill. My a few of my fraternity brothers were talking about going to San Francisco, yeah. to get grills. <laughs> and I was like, like you guys are kidding, right? I'm like, like you could pretty much go to a, a mall in Encino and do that too, <laughs> or you could probably get a freaking La Mesa and get one. Like they were so stoked on the whole idea of getting that. I'm like, I I don't see the point of wasting my money on that shit. Like yeah. to be completely honest with you, like dude, no, it's sick. And I was like, why? <laughs> so you have a lisp, dude. I saw a little pump do it in the video. It's tight. Yeah, it's super sick, dude. I saw 21 Savage in a picture. Dude, I want to get Dan deported. I want to get deported just like 21, dude. Did he actually get deported? Who knows? He just I think he just probably went into hiding for a little. I mean, even if he did get deported, he's still probably in a nice, like... People are acting like he's, like, getting shut down at the wall. <laughs> like, yeah, no. People are acting like he's an illegal alien that got caught. He was, really he was under like, house arrest. He was just chilling with his big-ass I mean, crib, probably. I mean, technically, he was an illegal alien, in a sense. At a certain point, 2006, your visa expired. I didn't know what a visa was. But, like, even if you got deported to London, it's not like you're fucking in a hut, like, cooking with mud. I know. It's not like it's a huge deal. Honestly, it's probably better that he goes to London anyway. I mean... This is more street cred, if anything. Yeah. Like, dude, he just got deported. Yeah. Check out his new album. Yeah. I got kicked out of America or some shit, like, you know? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I got booted. Because every one of his songs is, like, the most simple fucking arrangement ever. He's just got, I got booted. And it's just catchy. He's like, 20, 20, yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, A lot, a lot, a lot. Cornucopia. Cornucopia. <laughs> he just needs to add a three-syllable word to his uh, repertoire, and I'd probably listen to him. Dude, honestly, do you I like him. I get, I do. I used to fucking hate him. Whenever someone would play him, like there's a few people that people like Lil Pump. I was at Coachella, and I was literally peeking, and my friend was so set on going. We arrived at Lil Pump. You pumped up. Gucci gang. I was so <laughs> fucking pissed. I was like, I am leaving. I don't give a fuck who's coming with me. I'm going off on my own. And then everybody was like, I was like, I'm going to Khalid. I don't give a shit. Like Khalid's better than this fool. Like yeah. I like Khalid. He's good. Yeah, yeah. Like. And he Especially brought live. Billy. Got, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. it was super sick. But my friend was, like, kind of getting mad at me. Same guy that posted the video on Reddit. And I was like, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm not listening to Lil Pump. I fucking hate this fool. I, I used to hate 21 Savage just like that. I used yeah. to be like, dude, turn this fucking shit off. Like, you know, right? The Issa album came out. Yeah, yeah, uh, I fucking hated him. But then I started listening to Bank Account, like, whenever someone would play it. Yeah. And, you know, I was like... One, two, three, four, five, six. I was like, ooh, this is kind of catchy, man. Let's go. Oh, counting is catchy? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, counting is catchy, dude, for just sure. A, just a, uh, dude, I'm more of like a, I like the beat, dude. Oh, like I know, the I instrumental. Know. I like to rip on it, but at the same time, it's dan dance ability is half of it. Yeah, I don't really, I used to not even listen to lyrics of songs, dude. I used to just like jam out to the beat like, oh, like yeah, mean exactly. mungum. 
because it still makes you feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what the words say, half, probably more than half the reason people like music because it makes them feel some type, some type of way, you know? Yeah. Some type of way. Emotionally, you get like attached to certain songs, and I think that's a huge part. But live, it's like basically what Little Pump's doing is just going out there and plugging a mic into a boombox that's already gonna play. So he's not. There's no performing though. There's not really. That's like, what every rapper has been doing yeah, though. Yeah. I, honestly, that's. I what just it. love when rappers don't have backtracks and they're out there spitting every lyric. Like when I saw Vince Staples oh, yeah, and Tyler's dude. tour, I was like, both those guys didn't have any backtrack. They had, they did their all their own fills. I mean, that's the way it should be. I don't understand why it even like people are always talking about how like they don't want to work as hard. That's stupid. Really rappers are like, oh yeah, dude, this rapper is super. It's like, dude, you listen to them live. They're not even fucking singing half the way. It's like, no offense to who was it. Uh, Playboy Cardi, bro. He would literally just sing the first four like verses of his songs, and then a <laughs> machine gun <laughs> like would come off, and, and then they would change the song. He wouldn't even go through like thirty seconds into any song. He went through know? like thirty to uh, twenty second songs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, every every single song he ever made was fifteen seconds long. Did it, it Playboy was so Cardi dumb. and the Little Yachty sound like they're drowning in like one foot of water? Like they both got real drunk and like don't know how to swim. <laughs> they're at the beach and they just have like. You've seen those hobo videos of like bums drowning in, in water they can stand in? Yeah, it's like, oh my god, like, like but they try to, But they're recording like with a mic like right above the water and then okay. just like fucking inhaling water. Well, they're yeah. <laughs> Dude, I just don't get it. I like it. It's entertaining, I'll tell you that much. I think what's entertaining now is basically what's different. Like, if you're different enough, you're going to fucking make it. So once the tattooed face, uh, colored uh, hair thing goes out, oh, please. what's, what's next? I'm so over it. We're making retarded people famous in America. Eh? Not even famous. What about, what about what, what a little baby, though, is dope. And he wore Duh a diaper. Baby. Duh, Duh baby. baby. Duh baby. And he wore a diaper to freaking South by Southwest. I want to hear him live. He's got to be good. He has to be. Did you see his funk flex? No. His freestyle funk flex? No. He didn't do actual freestyle, but it was still... How do you feel about that? When rappers can't freaking... Um, freestyle? They have... Well, obviously, I understand you get that one moment, and you don't want to blow it, so you're going to say something you already know. Yeah. But, like, if you're a real rapper, you'll spit something off the top live. Yeah. I mean, you will you know when a rapper spits something that he's never said before. Like, yeah. if he's just, like, spitting out shit, like, it's nothing. Like, I respect that more than... You know, if they can make a good song, because how do I know they're making that song? You know, they they probably have a writer, good which writers. they definitely have writers. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I know for a fact most of the rappers out right now that are like famous, like don't write their own shit. There's no fucking way that they can like be that creative. Yeah, well, and there's they have so much music already that people can write for them. Just like comedians, like other people write for comedians sometimes because they've had so much material come out, they can write and adapt to how they sound already. So like rappers are the same way. If you've had three or four albums, people can write according to how you sound already and make verses according to your pitch and style. Like ghostwriters, like I know Fisher. That's what, that's what real ghostwriters are. Yeah, no Fisher. Uh, apparently, I don't know this if it's a fact or not, but apparently, you know Chris Lake. No, he's like deep house DJ, but he writes his music. What do you mean? How does he write? I mean, he doesn't write it. He produces his music. Like he makes his music for him. Fisher then, produces for this you know, guy. Chris Lake produces for Fisher. But Fisher has, like, the personality to, like, make it huge. So he's up there doing nothing? <laughs> no, no, he's... I mean, no, the, the, the thing about DJs, we were talking about this at no, work No, well, day. that's different, like, about what... It, the difference between a real DJ and a not a real DJ, I mean, I, if you're going to get strict about it, is one is actually performing live, and the other one... Basically, one can make errors, and the other one... There's no chance of errors unless the fucking electricity goes out. You know what I mean? Yeah. To where if you're out there scratching and mixing, you have a chance of sounding bad. Like a singer or guitarist can fuck up. Yeah. But like, if you're most DJs are just like, there's no chance of you actually fucking up because there's just no chance. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you can honestly be up there acting like you're doing something, but yeah, already have yeah. a set playlist totally. that's already made. I mean, I think that's the in most cases that's usually what it is. I mean, I think people just like listening. I don't think people really like actually think about it. But like, if they hear, I feel like it wouldn't really change anything because they're just. They just want to hear what they now, have to Now, come back play. to that danceability shit, baby. What gets the girls dancing? What we'll get the girls It's fucking... not even disc jockey anymore. It's more just playlist jockey now. Yeah. yeah. PJ. Well, it's how well you can, um, like, hold a crowd. Almost like an MC does. Like, uh-huh. with his voice. With Like, their true sign of a... Uh, if people want to hate on rap and hip-hop like older people, I'm like... Anybody to just hold an entire room with no nothing but their voice and not even having a good voice, just words, is pretty fucking mind-blowing. No 
Uh, yeah, I know. It's, I don't know. Just like a DJ, just like Fisher, why Fisher popular? He has energy that surrounds him, his persona outside of just the stage. Like, people want to just see him. Everyone like, he's a mascot. Yeah, if you see it, like, his fucking Instagram is hilarious. I yeah. showed my, my dad and then his girlfriend. So people will go see him yeah. play just because they, they just he's see him funny. on Instagram and they're like, oh my god, that guy's fucking hilarious. And then they see how lit the fucking crowd is that wherever he's playing and they're like, okay, I have to be a part of that, you know? Yeah, there was a year where like, where like D- DJing was really taken off when Diplo was like super popping, even though he still is. Uh, like Paris Hilton was the highest paid DJ for a certain year just because she was coming off of the reality shit and because her name was so huge, she got the like fast, fattest residency um, at, in Vegas and like traveling around. Yeah. But <laughs> she did absolutely nothing. I mean, I could be wrong, but. No, that's crazy though. She could spin at Hilton's. Hilton. <laughs> uh, dude. Yeah, no. That whole... Dude, we were talking about, though, at the D, about the DJs. The, like, I don't understand the hype of another DJ bringing out another DJ because it's kind of like they don't even have to fucking be there, you know? No. It's just a hype thing. Like, no, it's a face thing. It's like, um, I don't know. Who was the first real person to be super popular in music that didn't have any real talent? I like to say Madonna. I say fuck Madonna, fuck Madonna. <laughs> she was just a sexual. She was a sex like a sex symbol that basically made dance tracks. I know she could sing yes and no, but like her and then Britney Spears. Like Britney Spears could dance and was sexy as fuck. When I came out of singing, she sounded like a Mickey Mouse on helium, and she Dude, can't actually keep that up. I don't know, man. You know, right again, right again, Dude, that you, when the first person that came to mind when you brought that up was Bass Hunter. Bass Hunter? You know Bass Hunter? Oh, I remember seeing Bass Hunter at like festivals of weight. Like, Bass Hunter is so shit. What? Really? He, he gets me fired up. Like, they, it's, it's all auto-tuned. It's all like that right when they Bass discovered Hunter? auto-tune. Remember? It's like, uh, fuck, dude. Are, are they, are you talking about DJs? No, Bass Hunter is like that guy that made like that early 2000s techno and was singing. With the dreads, right? No, long, like black hair. Like, yeah. It was, Big Black, Big what's Black that Reds. fucking song called? Oh my god, he had one like super known song. So how old were you when a fucking um, Soldier Boy Tell Him came out? Oh fuck, I was in like sixth grade or fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> was it just as big for you guys like Country Road was? Oh it's, my god, dude, bro. that was the Country Road of back then. I know it's crazy how so- it's the how same long thing. how big of a like time period though it's been since the song was that big. I remember in sixth grade, like in fifth grade, we were at the carnival at our elementary school. I vividly remember this. I remember all of the sixth graders lining up and soldier boy, you tell him. Oh, and I was just like sitting there, like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, yeah, and they say, like, I was just, you saw that um, little Nas X video of him performing for the elementary school. Yeah. And like, you get a bunch of kids singing. Lean all in my bladder. bladder. And then back <laughs> then you were, back then they were saying Superman that hoe. Which really meant like fucking jizz all over some nice young lady's face. Is that what that meant? Yeah, super, oh, I, I no, super soak that, super soak oh, that super hoe. Soak that for that sure. Hoe. Oh. Superman that hoe is probably like diving into some puss. Like from across the room, the chick's laying on the bed spread. And yeah. you like dive into that puss. You go up into the... I know, but I think... Like, like lean in my lean all in my bladder. I think like that's a lot harder for like a kid to understand. Cause I remember at lean, I didn't really figure out what lean was until I was like in like middle school. I don't think. But in a way, it's like, like the grade. lyrics are so simple to the not the to the old country road that like they have so they're, they're gonna have to be like the parents are gonna be like what what does lean all in my bladder mean like kid is on <laughs> Jeremy what the fuck are you looking can up you, like can you go on Google and look up how many times things have been like searched. It'd be funny to see, like, lyrics to Old Country Road. Search count? And then, like, the age of the searcher, too. That That's would be pretty, crazy. That's some deep analytics right there. Deep analytics. Pervy. Did you ever get, like, rolled when you were a kid for searching, uh, like, porn or something on your computer? Like, yeah, did I think it... I broke a computer for sure. Fucking sl- sledgehammered a computer. No, I mean, like, did your parents... And viruses. Did... Wolfenstein Enemy Territories and porn. Yeah, yeah, no, my, I remember we were at my friend's house and there was just like, <laughs> he was like, dude, he's like, Seth, do you want to see something that'll change his life forever? And I was like, this is like in fourth grade. And you know, I was just sitting there like, sure. I was like, okay. Looks up this website. I still remember the name. It's called Club 17. 
Oh, dude, just, oh, that's the perfect days. That's just like, you're going up on the ski lift. You're like, oh, I'm not ready for that black diamond yet. No, dude, the front page is a bunch of girls with their legs up with like... <laughs> like but the attraction of the website is to get old creepy dudes to be like, oh, they're not legal yet. That's why. Yeah. That's not... <laughs> dude, I don't know, dude. That fucking, that, that scarred me for a few years until I was old enough to understand. Like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. not that bad, you know? Like, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a little too young to see, like... Was it mostly Bush, you remember? For some reason, every time I think of, like, looking at porn when I was younger, I picture hair. No, it was... I maybe, maybe. I don't really remember. Obviously, this was a very long time ago, but I just remember them with their legs up, like, spread up, and it was, like, the first time I ever saw a vagina, and I was, like... I was literally it wasn't just like, attra- it wasn't attractive. I was literally like, what the fuck? I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is this? And then I was like, curious. I was just like, me and him were scrolling up. And then I remember later that day, my mom gets a call from his mom saying, yeah, they were watching like, they were on a, a very inappropriate website, all this shit. And I was like, oh yeah, getting in trouble for it? Yeah, I got in trouble yeah. for it. I was like, I don't know what the oh, fuck the, she's talking the about. The famous one is when, um, now I remember that's funny that you say that. I remember Hummers.com when like the H2 and the H1 were like a big car, you know, uh-huh. and everything. But Hummers.com is just straight like beaver shots with hair. That's oh. what that's about. <laughs> that's it's happening. It's like beavers with afros, dude, is is basically what shows up. Hummers, yeah, that's, I remember that was the big way all of us got busted because we were like all into cars and, you know, fucking uh-huh. boy stuff. Hummers.com, if you type an S in instead of Hummer or something, or maybe it's reverse. But yeah, that's what would come up right away. Yeah. A bunch of grills, you know, hairy grills. Damn. Bear, hairy. It's a great way to start out, I guess. A bunch of hair bears. Hair bears. <laughs> Get lost in that for us. No, I was talking about with, on the Lisa episode a little bit about um, guys get busted with porn all the time is because it's hard to find the good one. And so your history shows you've been looking through a ton of porn and really oh, you've yeah. just been trying to find the chick with the better nipple or like <laughs> you know doesn't have stretch marks or maybe you're not into fake tits or like oh, yeah. maybe the chick's hair is too fucking bleached out like there's it's so funny when you really get down to it you're like if you're not a complete weirdo you want a specific kind yeah. of like nice porn yeah 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 thing. it's not like you're watching all those videos you start watching it like oh this doesn't have like you know the position I want. Yeah. I remember there was you a meme. You don't pick the first one. Yeah, there was a meme. It's like it's like me scrolling on Pornhub for hours. None of these will do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you on the fortieth page of like Pornhub or something. Yeah, dude. A few nights ago, I was I was looking to you know sin a little bit myself, and I had my phone out, and I'm scrolling, and I'm watching a movie at the same time, and I just I ended up just not not jacking off at all. I just put it down and I was like, ah, I none of the material. None it's like the material scrolling, is good it's enough. like scrolling through Netflix and being like, ah, maybe I haven't seen everything, but you know, uh, I've searched a little. You're bit. looking and then you're like, you try starting something, and you're like, oh, I'm no. just not into it yeah. anymore. <laughs> I'm just not into. It. I'm just gonna go to bed. That's it. We'll try. When you were talking about, you know, we have a lot of stupid shit to complain about or whatever. Yeah, I feel like you know, if you're you know, you're living in America, you know, we are blessed obviously to live where we live. But, I mean, you could say the same about anywhere on the planet. Like, you think about it. Like, in Africa, if you live in a village, you have a lot less to worry about in terms of, you know, uh, financial stability. Like, you have a very simple life. So, I think that if you live, let's say you live, like, in a village in Africa, yeah. and you live, you know, in the U.S., you are basically, you're, you have a lot, you have, like, the same stuff to be thankful for and the same, I mean, unless you're, like, you know, you're born into an amazing family. Like, we were all You know blessed. what the main difference is? The main difference, and this is a good example of what causes depression and anxiety specifically in the United States, Nicotine. is that people in other countries, no, 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 people in other countries wake up, <laughs> that's a good one, though. People wake up every day knowing what they have to do in other countries where it's not as, where it's not yeah. as civilized. Because you actually have a goal every single morning when you wake up. In this country, we have the option to do absolutely nothing, which I fill most of my days with, is nothing. Yeah. Where I'm like, every day you can wake up and be like confused. I think most of depression and confusion, most of depression and like anxiety comes from people just not knowing what to do with their lives. And then that, that, that Jiminy Cricket conscience comes in and tells you that you should be doing these things when really you're just sitting there doing nothing. And then people end up calling that anxiety and depression. Obviously, some of it's clinical, a good amount of it, but I think, I mean, my, I don't, I'm not good with percentages, but I'd say at least 50%. Oh, for sure. Are people that just don't know what to do with their lives and confusion, they, they label confusion as depression or anxiety. And I think the biggest part of that, of what you're saying, I'm going to add on to this, is that, you know, people, at least right now, it's very difficult for people to actually, like, set goals for themselves and actually, like, pursue things because 
instead of just thinking it, thinking of it day by day, they're comparing themselves to others. So let's say someone's trying to get into design and they're like looking at like all these like artists that are like, you know, creating all this shit. And they're like, oh my God, like how is he making that? They like, go on like, holy shit, this is so hard. I'm not going to try. Instead of like thinking about it day by day, just getting better day by day, they're thinking about like how long it's going to take them. And that scares the shit out of them. They're like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do with that much time. You know, I've been working at Union for like about 10 months now. Yeah. It feels like I just started yesterday. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people forget that time does really move fast when yeah. you're not really, when you kind of just I'm a good live example life. of that. Yeah. yeah. But it's always like, um, my question is always with that stuff is how much am I benefiting from my position right now? Like I have this visualization that I like to say of like, I feel my life is, or the idea of my life is a guy with a bowl for a head with a goldfish in it, you know, and you're just here, you're, you're there. Like you don't have a choice. Almost like the goldfish doesn't have a choice to be there, Mm -hmm. but he's going to make the, you know, he's just going to be along with his body and like, almost like, like treat your life like it's a movie, regardless of what you're doing. Yeah. You have to. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, my religion is laughter. That'd be a good name for this podcast, too, is like laughing naked. Basically, I don't even really explain it, but laughing naked was the idea to laugh and be vulnerable in your most vulnerable state. You have to be. I mean, that's the way you should live. It's where you're, if you're butt naked and laughing, you're shake. you basically, you know, you're getting body shakes, you know, in vulnerable states. <laughs> Seriously, you're just like, woo! Yeah, so I'm like, and it's the most unconscious thing we do. It's like, really, what is it? What's going on right now? Yeah. It's the literal. It's one of the only things you don't like try to do, and it just happens. Because like you can sniff and smell, you can things are gonna sniff up in that nose, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, what, what else are we? How else are we gonna enjoy anything if you're not? And that comes back to the third world, like the, the the what we're thankful for thing. I'm just thankful, really, at the end of the day or the year of the life, to be able to laugh at so many things. But like so many people don't even have the luxury of laughing. They can't. They, there's just they, they, some people just can't even laugh because they don't even know what it's like to be happy, you know. Mm-hmm. But then uh, I assume a lot of cultures, like family-oriented cultures, that just like you live together and uh, you know close quarters the whole life, they form like deep forms of like humor and like you know. It's almost funny to go back and think about how humor. When did humor start? When did laughter start culturally? It had to go back, you know, as far as we can imagine. When somebody like. I guess the best example would be like two cavemen, you know, they're trying to start a fire and one drops the rock and hits their toe and the other one laughs at them because they're not actually injured. They're just hurt. And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, no, yeah. Like would that happen? Is that where it started? Or I don't does know. it happen with, do animals laugh? You know? <laughs> no, animals for sure laugh. Come on. Do they? Do dogs like laugh? Oh, fuck. That's a good, that's do something they, to do, think do about. Do they see humor? Do they get it? I know monkeys do. That's for sure. I mean, I guess I just, I've always just kind of thought like my dog is laughing when he has his mouth open, you know, when he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like pan, what is it? Panting? Panting. Yeah. Panting. <laughs> that's a funny way to think of laughter. You know, like, <laughs> like yeah. that's what I always thought because he's all, he's usually playing with me or like I'm throwing a toy at him and he's just kind of like all fucking fired up, you yeah. know, running around and shit. Or when he's like, Rrr! like, you know, like trying yeah. to like play with me. I don't know. But I don't think, I mean, I've never even research it that hard but it'd be interesting to see where laughter starts like in the brain because it's almost like a language because will like, be your frontal just like humor is like a language because like especially with somebody like me i'm just like saying nonsense in order a good a good way to explain myself is like with meeting people i try to just say stuff and explain it later it's where like a lot of the time it makes zero sense you know and i'm bent on confusion a good amount of the time it's where i'm like i'd rather have you laugh at being confused mm-hmm. than, you know, than actually getting what i'm saying Oh yeah, no. There's definitely times when I've when you've been like my best friend laughed at confusion. <laughs> <laughs> but then like like with Carlos, somebody I clicked with super super quick just because we had a very similar sense of humor. It's almost mm-hmm. like a telekinetic. Uh, you guys just communication of yeah. sarcasm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I love sarcasm. It's the best. It is so fun. But dude, the thing is, I put sarcasm in my fucking coffee every morning. Damn. They sell it at the at really. The, yeah. Really? All right. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, dude, but no, honestly, I'm pretty bad at sarcasm. Like, like I'm always, I'm like about 85% of the time I'm sarcastic, but a lot of people just don't understand that I'm sarcastic. Like, it takes a little bit for people. Like, you kind of understand when I'm sarcastic. Some people, usually girls I'm dating, don't, they don't see it. And then I have to like, I was being sarcastic. I, I have to like dude, explain isn't the, myself. It's the worst fucking thing in the world. I, I'm like trying to be funny and they're just awkward. looking at me like, yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> that was a joke. Dude, that's so funny that you say that. I'm like, that's what, that's what I'm kind of like waiting for. I always talk about it, but like the kind of like girl I'm waiting for is to be like, oh, she already gets my humor. Like the, the burning humor. Like, like I get really attracted to you if you burn the fuck out of me, you know? Oh, yeah. Give me shit. Give you shit. Just yeah. like if I go on a big rant about something, they're just able to clap back with like one thing. And I'm like, wow, I was wrong. Like, and I'm like, like go on a huge rant, say, shut the fuck up, you little bitch, like, or something like that. If a like, girl would say that to me, I'd get, I'd spring a boner and it would break the oh, seam of my pants. Damn. Maybe yeah. You it, my zipper wouldn't even see it coming. Literally. Do I like, Dude, I like when I can have. The cum would be seeping through the zippers. You would just be sitting like. Yeah, and then I'd be like, I, uh, I left the, um, uh, I have to return some videotapes. Oh, yeah. I have to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll text you in about 10 minutes. You just got to grab an extra pair of pants and yeah. back there somewhere. Dude, there has to be so many stories of guys coming early and just leaving without any explanation. I mean, it would be an amazing highlight reel in history. Dude. Of, of dudes just, like, getting touched the right, you know. Oh, dude. I've heard girl, I've heard stories about, <laughs> dude, some just guys. like a slight graze and he's just like... Giggity. I just can't I can't understand that. I guess maybe if you've never like had a woman's touch your entire life and then it happens, like could that be possible? Is that scientifically yeah. like No, I think it's possible. possible. If, it was, if you were sexually aroused enough by somebody physically, you know, and you're anticipating enough in your mind something's gonna happen, it yeah. definitely happens that way. Damn. Just being super attracted to your girlfriend like I guess super attracted to I think it's almost like super attracted to somebody you love when you're young. Makes you come early. I think you're right. I mean, the, from a, from a, I honestly from, just need to research that shit because there's sometimes that I'm like hooking up with a, like a girl or something, and you know, it's a lot faster than I want it to be or plan to be, you know. And like, I just don't know. Does it have to do with stress? Like, it, but it's just so Dude, random. We need to me. have a renovation of pussy arousal methods. It's so random, though. We need to learn. We kids need to, need to be learning how to arouse the clitoris and the pussy. I don't know if those are two of the one. I think I just like I don't I don't know what it is, dude. Maybe I don't know. Well, like, play? shouldn't I mean I've ta- I talked about it before, but like sexual sexual education should be more <laughs> hands on. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a chaperone, you know, guiding to you know male male female. Isn't male, this male, a male. movie? This is a fucking movie. Is it? What movie is it? I think it's that fucking Drill Bit Taylor. I don't know. No, it's I've seen it like twice, dude. Is that with that fucking kid and Girl Next Door? Is or that American it? American Pie. I think it's Girl Next Door when they're in like the library and they they they're filming the they're porn. filming the porno, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. they're oh, like, I love it, they're like, oh, door. let's just fucking de- let's just make a fucking sexual sexual education like yes. with actual porn. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They should do that. Not well, just put a camera up a vagina. Why the fuck? <laughs> like, I don't, I can't even see that with my own eyes. Why does that matter? You know? Yeah. Well, most guys get they go they. I mean, just like you saw the porn for your first time. Yeah. If you hadn't seen that, you'd be going down there like you're searching, like you're like. You know, on stages for plays and stuff, there's those curtains, and you can never get, through, you can never get through them. You know, it's hard to find the hole to get through the curtains. Oh yeah, on the stage. yeah. And you're like walking like, through. The, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that with a put. You're just like, what the fuck? What do I? You're going in like you're looking through a submarine, tell like you know, <laughs> scope like. Open the legs, like. And then you're like, I guess I'll start licking. Like I don't know where to lick. But yeah, you know, I'm just. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> you're just down there like. You're like, are we good? Yeah. Hold on, let me, let me use my like flashlight real yeah, quick. Like you're fixing a car, and she's like, is everything good down there? Come out, you got like black tar on your yeah, face. Yeah. You're just like, oh, yeah, almost done, don't worry. Yeah, were you riding a mechanical bowl? Like, were we hooked up? She got a bunch of fucking... <sighs> yes. <laughs> you yeah, got some, like, you got some fucking stick on your, on your badge. Dude, I want to ride a mechanical bull. Oh, you knew somebody you could get some pointers for him is Lisa. Have you seen her highlight reel? A bull riding? No. Oh, is she, she a moonshine a, professional? She got a drone inside of a building. Really? No, not really. But <laughs> she, 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 if you ask her to show you her method, she's like, she's like, oh yeah, she's like hard to throw off of a bull. And I, you know, dude, Lisa's a wild one, man. She's a wild cat. She's a wild cat. Yeah. Oh. 
think she got nose ringed up too. She just she was did? trying that clip on. I was like, that looks pretty fucking sexy. You mm. should, keep, you should keep, keep that up. Very fun. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, have you seen the new. Who's going to be the new Batman? Is it the fucking Twilight Fool? Robert Pattinson. Yeah, people think I look like him. You kind of do. He has more fucked up teeth. Their teeth are he has like a okay. he has like a look that's like he's like ugly hot you know he's like like I don't know what he's kidding. he's the perfect Batman in my opinion I think he's per- I think he's good too I think he's, well, he's be great. Come out in the last three years he came out with movies Good Time which is like really gnarly pulpy have you heard of it I say I gotta come clean with you about something what so I told you about my brother yeah oh. that's why he got the role was from this movie specifically okay where he plays. An older brother of a kid with Down syndrome, and he gets him, convinces him to rob a bank with him, and then he, the the kid with Down syndrome, ends up going to jail. Okay. And he kind of goes on this like scavenger hunt, acid and dose like mission through New York City to get enough money to bail him out. Um, very sad ending, but basically super edgy. But Robert Pattinson has that look with jagged teeth and fucking, you know, paleish skin. He actually will make the Batman kind of like scary as opposed to sexy. I think. I think that. Like, how Latin, all, the, all, the, all the other Batmans have been sexy. Christian Bale, good looking dude. Uh, George Clooney, say no more. Personal. Uh, what's Michael that other Keaton. fool? Bing Bing. Who? The ba- Batman Forever. Ben Affleck. No, that's not Ben Affleck. Oh. Batman Forever is the one with the uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah, that was like one of my. That was I've probably seen that one a thousand times. Honestly. Or is that George Clooney? With uh, no, with George Clooney isn't. Doctor Freeze. All right, everyone, chill. No, that's... no, Batman Forever is Michael Keaton, yeah. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. George Clooney with Mr. Freeze? Or yeah. I thought it was Michael Keaton again. George Clooney was with, with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as... But Freeze. it was the same Robin, though, right? Um, Jerry O'Connell. Um... Wasn't the same... The Robin, the same Robin, the... I, don't, I think twice? it was a different actor. I think it was a different actor. The one that Uma Thurman was in, right? It was one with George Clooney, Uma Thurman, Arnold Schwarzenegger. The I know that's Clues. the one George Clooney was in, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I honestly was hoping it would be a black Batman just because of my first episode. Yeah. That would have been <laughs> nuts. You called that shit. Like, shit! Yeah. Do you think it's better to be themed? A themed, like, a uh, like already known topic before... Yeah. No. I think it's I better can... just to spit it off randomly. That's just me. That's like my ADHD talking because if you're, if you're able to just start talking and then get it rolling... Like that just shows that you like you, like you know you can actually you're actually into the conversation like you want to have if you have a theme you have already something like predetermined that you're already yeah. basing the conversation off of so it's kind of like not natural. Well, I mentioned it. We are we we're recording earlier. I said zombie boy gets put in the friend zone. Oh yeah. So what is a good way to get put in the friend zone? That way. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, no. What's a good way to put yourself in the friend zone? So say you notice this is another situation. You notice. A female is into you. Okay. And you're just not into it? Yeah, but you're like chilling in a group, you know? I'm really good at people putting, be, like, letting girls know I'm in, like in the friend zone. You call them, if you call them kid, oh. What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah. Homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I usually hit him with the dab up, you know? Yeah. The dab up, like, what's good, brother? Just like a really big slap. Yeah, like one of these. Uh. No, but then sometimes they get pissed. They're like, Really? A fucking handshake? Like, yeah. you know, you get all fired up, and I'm just like... Did you really just pat me when you hugged me? Like, yeah, pat him again <laughs> yeah, three times in the back. I'm not your bud. Yeah, that's what it's What a bud? Like. Yeah, I'm not your bud, bro. Dude, I don't know. Lately, I'm like, I've been, like, pretty nice to people, like, when I see them out, like, people that I haven't You're seen in a while. You're always nice. You might... You could, you I don't know. Might... I went through a phase of being a complete dick when I saw people. I was like, what up, dude? Nice to see ya. How's college? Cool. Later. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I've been like, but, but I feel like some girls like think of it as flirting. Like, there's a few girls. I mean, and they're cool with it. Like, they have nothing wrong. They don't run away or anything. It's just like, when I start like talking to them, asking them questions, having an engaging conversation with them when I see them out there, they take it the wrong way, you know? And then they, I feel like they think either that I'm like trying to get on them, which I'm not, or, I mean, sometimes I am obviously, but like, you know, sometimes I feel like. It's people are really hard, like like it's hard to like explain where you stand with people nowadays. I feel like there has to be a lot of specificity. I don't know if that's a fucking word. Specific. No, it's specificity is a word. Specificity. Yeah, yeah, like more of more of that. Like I feel like it's a lot harder to uh, 
basically show where you stand with somebody. Yeah, I get you. I just the, just the older you get, the more like uh, hopefully the more just like the more honest you are with people, regardless of if people like you or not. I'm like the the thing I always try to remember, and when I get insecure or worry about like what other people think about me, is I'm like, why would you want everybody to like you? It's like, it's like no, everybody's gonna like you. People aren't gonna immediately dislike you for making a mistake with your words. Mm-hmm. Perfect example of why. Well, like I think the best version of podcasts. The three things that make a good podcast are to be offensive, to be funny, and to not you know hold back words. Yeah, like, you gotta like, people, let it all can, out. people can misspeak, and it's okay. And I think what you're talking about with girls and stuff like that, girls like to hear that stuff too. Like girls like to. Girls like guys that admit that they're wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? The most, the sexiest thing a person can do in general is admit that they're wrong and say they're sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like also another thing is people nowadays say sorry way too much. I mean, I was like... Oh, totally. I mean, been sincerely sorry where you yeah. like step over a line. Yeah, you know, you say something stupid and you're like... Yes. Oh, yeah. You say, say something that? sexist you say or you right? say something... Like, I thought it's that so was funny, funny I mean, in my head. I love then, Z- Zach's know? joke was so funny because like, Zach's super sweet. But like he's like he's like I know I have the face of a misogynist. <laughs> I'm like, dude, as long as you know that and you can make a joke about it, because it's true. It's I cool. Love, I do. I love Zach, dude. Yeah, he's a great right. kid. But that's 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 uh, the most attractive thing is when people can like, not like aren't trying to be perfect. It's like being cool is being uncool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of just like whenever I. The way I kind of been living my life lately is just kind of like, dude, no filter and like, all honestly, just be honest. Like, if you're honest, and I'm just like lately, I'm just just trying to be myself, you know. And like, yeah. that's just the best way to do it, you know. Well, you the know? question always begins is like, oh, what is your, what is, what does being yourself mean? How would you not be yourself? Like, what's an occasion where you like you wish you holding could, back? But what would be a specific occasion where you knew you should have been yourself as opposed to like, oh, like I was. Um, I was too caught up in trying to hook up with a girl, or I was too hung up in like trying to speak properly around adults. Like that, I think that's a big thing too. Is like when you get to a certain age where you can start talking as friends with your parents and, and your can, parents' friends. Yeah, you can yeah. stop holding back your words and thoughts because oh, you're yeah. treated as a just a in, you're treated as an individual. You're not a kid anymore. You're, you're not like, someone that they're taking care of. They're trying to raise. You're already raised. And if somebody wants to look down on you for being dirty or being whatever with your however you are, it's like. Fuck that! Fuck that person because yeah. you're an adult. You're technically you're an adult now too. I still feel like I'm a boy, to where like in certain situations I'll hold back my words, but it's getting less and less and less and less. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah, I agree. Just like with getting mad at work or something, or getting mad in general, I say get mad. Raise your voice. Like you know, if you're a good, if you're if you're a decent person, getting mad and having outbursts is okay. Like if you ever got mad at like manager or something, like actually like spat out. Yeah, I just get, I just, sometimes I'll get mad at people contradicting, you know, just like contradicting themselves or getting mad about things that like. You can't control. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get mad anymore. I just step back and I'm like, you do it. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> no, be my guest. Like, you know. But I think uh, if I was a manager, I'd be a fucking dick. Oh. I think people sure. would respect me, but I'd be a dick. Oh, dude, when I first started, I thought you were the. I thought you were going to be like the biggest dick ever because I didn't <laughs> understand your sarcasm yet. I was like, dude, who the fuck does this kid think he is? <laughs> and then I was like, I'll try again. I'm like, yo, what up, Keegan? Sup, fool? <laughs> I don't yeah. know some stupid shit. No, but then as time went on, you know, I feel like the biggest thing is like... No, joking is joking is love, dude. Joking and yeah. like making fun of people is like a form of love. It's like if you make a joke about somebody, it's usually not vicious, you know? If it's meant to make somebody laugh, it's not vicious. It's a form of love. Like just like... Uh, it's a good example of an animal kingdom of when, like, you know, the cubs are growing up. It's like the dad is rough with them and, like, jokes with them, you mm-hmm. know. He shows a form of affection that's rough affection. It's like joking hard with somebody is, like, it's like a rough, rough form of affection. It's like you give somebody a nickname. I guess, uh, did you see mid-90s? Nope. Oh, you didn't? I'm pretty uneducated on films but and you stuff. know when it came out and shit, right? The skating movie? Oh, oh, I saw that. Yeah, no, no yeah, the, the mid-90s. Yeah, no, I see yeah, yeah. I don't Just know like that. when they called him Sunburn, like, he felt like he was, like, oh, he's, like, they gave you just a, they gave me a nickname like I'm I'm, I'm in. Sunbird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh-huh. it's a form of inclusion. Yeah. If you show like a bit of like brotherly kind of fucking like roughing them up. Yeah, and yeah, like... yeah, yeah. I guess I guess just another way to treat like restaurant jobs is like 
Yeah, they can be petty, but at the same time, you can like learn a be- learn, learn a lot about how to treat people generally. Mm-hmm. You know, and you get called out for not treating people right, which is I think is the most like, accountability ends up making you grow more than anything in any job. You know, for sure. You. To where like uh, I guess in hip hop example. Like when J. Cole decided to do an interview with Lil Pump, like he probably didn't want to do that, but he probably rethought it and was like, this is just a good way for different generations to connect. Uh huh. You know? And maybe it doesn't gain any ground, maybe it does. You know what I mean? But, but at, at least, least he tried it. Yeah, you know, obviously, like, you know, yeah. like even what, what was his face? Uh, I don't know if you ever saw what's the fucking guy's name? Uh, he just he got shot in his BMW. Sam Yang Lin? No, looking, uh, top, uh, Tenacious D? Yeah, XX Tentacion. He was like, yo, like, I don't give a shit. Like, this none of this means anything to me, but if I can, you know, if I can change or like help a few like a million people or a million kids yeah. with their lives, like I did what I needed to do. Like yeah. I don't care if I die soon. Like that's also exactly along the lines of what you're saying, you know. Yeah. He's just doing it. So or at least he was saying he was doing it and so he would help good generations. Yeah, I think, I even think, I mean, I think a good, like, the 30 to 40-year-old rappers, like, that are starting to be impressionable on the younger generation, like, Joey Badass is still pretty young, but, like, J. Cole and Kendrick and those people, like, the gang, like, the banging thing doesn't help anything. I mean, it's just, like, people are still getting shot, you know? Yeah, I mean... I mean, people need to realize that materialism, if anything, will just get you killed. Oh. The only reason XXXTentacion was killed is because he was flexing on Instagram. That's the only reason people knew where he was. Yeah. He's taking pictures of where he was. He's like, I'm going to the store to get this. I have a Louis bag, which probably has a fucking bunch of money in it. Yeah. It's like you're asking for it. Yeah. You really are asking for it. If you come from a community where that is a common thing to be robbed, don't grow up thinking you're 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 safe. Yeah. Unless you're fucking Kanye West or something where you're literally protected. Don't think that you're off off limits. Like, especially if you're rapping about stuff about like Stuff like that. It's like you're. It's like you're inviting it. You're inviting people just to come fuck you up, like yeah. regardless. Yeah, it's no. Like, and then it's, there's a whole picture where he was. Shit, that was a burnt. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you're even. Not like, to speak ill of the dead, but it's like, how much are you putting yourself? Yeah. At ba- like Nipsey Hussle's the saddest example of that. Oh, he sure. was literally my favorite. Rapper. He was literally leaving all of that life behind. His bit had been, you know, he'd been left. He's trying it. to change it, dude. <laughs> he'd he been left be, it. He'd been left it. And he's been trying to, you know, you know, turn that shit around, dude. He was like had a meeting with the, you know, LA, the head of the LA police, and like stuff like that. Yeah. You can let it mellow. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, push it down. Off, See a clown, punch it. What? Is this toilet not flush? Yeah, you can let it mellow. Let it mellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As long as you didn't dookie. Oh, I totally Really, a liquid shit? Because I heard it. Liquid shits and cocaine spliffs. You can get high as fuck. Uh, we can call it. I'll probably just cut this one up. Cut it up? Cut it up. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? Favorite conspiracy theory? The one that I believe the most? The one that you're most, like, the one that, in, in, like, uh... What's the word? Kind of. I refresh my ideas on the UFO stuff all the time. I believe. I believe in aliens for oh, sure. Oh, you have to be. Like, if you don't think, yeah. Well, what is your standout? Do you think that there, you know, there is another species? Like, I think everybody has to believe that there is another uh, living, other living civilizations like out in the universe. So this is how I feel. I feel like we've been in contact with extraterrestrials for. A, Maybe a hundred years, maybe less. I agree. Maybe even thousands of years, but I feel like. So, do you listen to almost every Rogan? I try to listen to all like the you know the interesting. Ones. Do you listen to the Graham Hancock ones? I love Graham Hancock. Oh, so you listen to the ones about uh, basically the future of exploration is in outer space, but inner space in terms of like, because you've heard how biblically like the burning of uh, the story of the burning bush about burning acacia in the Bible is really about going up to this hill and bringing a psychedelic plant, the acacia plant that actually has psychedelic DMT properties to actually enter these, um, you know, the other world that people say they enter when they go on, or on DMT. You've mm-hmm. heard about a sim, like everybody has similar experience when they do DMT, right? Yeah. So the future of going on, you know, outer space or inner space missions would be 
yeah, they said they're doing it at Cambridge or Oxford or one some some place where they put people under with a with a constant feed of DMT so they can stay in these elevated states for longer and explore those realms. And so what there is what Graham Hancock is assuming is that a lot of a lot of free thinking individuals that evolved humanity in the past are responsible for, you know, are responsible for the technology we have now through oh, for sure. through, through like through DMT trips and like the pyramids, the similarity of all that stuff is through like I guess to call it you have to call it magic now, but through a psychic uh, communication. Dude, I, I and using and using uh, cartography of the stars, like you know. Uh huh. I think no, the whole of the pyramids are my favorite. That shit is absolutely crazy. Like, dude, three million two hundred thousand stones, and it's off by half a centimeter, pointing to true north. Yeah. Eight sides. Yeah. Most of the blocks weighing over two tons. I mean, over there's some that weigh over twenty tons, yeah. dude. And they're all from a quarry that's like fifty, right, fifty miles away. Yeah. So like, how the fuck do they do that? And other components that are like even further away, like certain certain minerals. Dude, it's that just shit's fucking crazy. Have you ever seen that video when they send the drone into the, one of the chambers? Yeah. Like the little like the little crevice, and they send the drone in, and they just the the ancient Egyptians won't let anybody explore them because they think that. Uh, or go under the Sphinx, or go under the pyramids and the chambers below, because they think that, you know, or whatever they found under there will discredit the ancient Egyptians from building the pyramids. Wait, who said the current Egyptians say that? You mean? That's why they won't let anybody explore or you know excavate, you know, like or underneath monuments there. Well, there there's stuff under the pyramids. Yeah, like there's stuff. There's the bunch of just just catacombs. Stuff, catacombs. And there's there's apparently a library under the Sphinx or some shit. I don't fucking know. But the the whole point is it's whatever they found down there will discredit ancient Egyptians from even participating in building the pyramids, which I mean, I think what how how because of there's proof because there's no hieroglyphic of extraterrestrial integration. No, no, I'm not saying extraterrestrials did this shit. I'm saying it, there are human errors, like Graham Hancock says there are human errors. But I just want to know how they did it because it, it just uh, none of the none of the theories that we have today really make any sense. Yeah. No, they still don't make sense. Like, we couldn't probably... If, if we try to do it... Like, there's people that have tried to, like, cut, like, limestone. And, like, it's just so funny to see. It's like, we look like a bunch of idiots. Yeah, and it, what, a good way I like to think about it is... I mean, I don't know how um, restricted and, like, treated like slaves the ancient Egypt, most ancient Egyptians were. To where, like, I like to think about it in a spiritual sense. To where if all the people woke up knowing what they had to do every day... They could form some sort of like, like energy. Mm-hmm. Like if everybody had the same goal in a massive civilization, and they were coming together to work on one art project. It'd be like you know a bunch of artists coming together, thinking about only one thing, and they only able to communicate one thing. Or were they treated like cattle? That actually like reminds me. You know, I started. Did they care about what they were doing, or were they really treated like slaves? Well, no, they had. They, they, they it was artistic. Like the pyramids were artistic. It was. Was like it artistic for work. the workers, or was it art, or only artistic for the architects? No, I think I think every architect from across the planet came together to build those pyramids because where it is, it's right in the middle of yeah. Well, there has to be, yeah. Like, no, that's why I think there has to be a global communication between the civilizations in order to build those pyramids. Yeah, I mean, there it's just it's synonymous. Like they're all, it's just perfect. Yeah, it, it, like it's like I don't understand how the fuck the. We're definitely missing a chapter in the human history. There's definitely something missing there, and honestly, it kind of sucks. Well, a lot of people think it's uh, either a psychedelic or extraterrestrial like involvement, yeah. which I think that's fun to think about. What was I was gonna say something? Fucking uh, what? See it? I'm trying to think. What was it? It was great. It was so. It was such tall grays. Huh? Tall grays? Tall grays. Yeah. It's just alien species. No? Well. That's when I got really stoked on uh, the alien stuff was when I saw this... The former prime minister of Canada spoke in front of Canadian Congress in front of a huge group of people about knowledge of aliens and different species of aliens that he acquired from a general and like all this stuff. And he's, this is an old guy talking about how uh, the United States government had been in contact with aliens since like 
like there's another documentary on Netflix called Unacknowledged. Did I say that one? Are you talking about the what's that fool's name? Uh, Unacknowledged, the guy who made it. What's his name? I don't know. Anyways, it dives into actual that Ross like the real bodies and stuff that were, were found, like these little alien bodies, and like actually shows you a bunch of the stuffs and talks to the captains and you know mm-hmm. a bunch of legitimate people. Um, there's that guy. What's his name? Area Fifty One guy documentary. You heard about that? Mm-mm. What the fuck? Was I calling it Area Fifty One or Fifty Four? No, Area Fifty One. Yeah, it's no, Fifty One. Fifty Club Fifty Four is a fucking the best club ever in the seventies in New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I want to go. Club, <laughs> club Fifty One. It's an alien theme. Club Fifty One. Yeah. Come in here. Come with an alien only. Uh, no, the, but there, there was this guy, I forgot his name, but he was able to basically, he, here, let me look it up real quick, because this is going to bug the shit out of me. Um, he basically, a claim that he worked at Area 51, and this is before they even knew about an Area 51. Like, they, there was no, nothing on the map, and then they had satellite imaging, and it proved that he, what he was talking about was correct. And he was explaining, like, what he saw in there, and, um, like, nobody believed him, but then he kept proving himself right by, you know, explaining the things that were there on yeah. the base that they could easily prove. Bob Lazar. You ever oh, heard yeah, of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, have, they have an Area 51 documentary with, uh, I forgot who made it. But I think it's the same guy that made that documentary you were just uh-huh. talking about. Yeah, and he was basically just proving everything. And people obviously are still skeptical about, like, what he's saying, but he was able to prove so many things correctly that it's almost kind of like, should we believe him? Like, you know? Yeah, or the the well, the new idea, or idea that they supply and unacknowledged is that you remember hearing how there was the um, Foo Fighters and UFOs used by the Nazis during World War Two. So the the band Foo Fighters, oh, Foo Fighters, the name of a Foo Fighter is like a basically a, a glowing orb. A glowing orb was created by the that. Nazis yeah. in the in, and that's what pilots in World War Two would always report on the radio would be. A f- like a Foo Fighter, they call it, would just be like a glowing orb, kind of like uh-huh. that was more of a buoy, like a like a like a buoy than yeah, anything. a buoy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, like, and you've heard of von Braun, the guy who responsible for NASA is a former German, and they think that the future of forming a new world order would be to stage a UFO invasion with technology that we created ourselves. Yeah, or that somebody... It's like the only thing that would form global unity... Would, would be would, an alien invasion. An alien invasion or a massive natural disaster that would take out, you know. Yeah, it's the only way. And that's... Have you ever seen that, the Georgia Guidestones? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the whole of the rules. And then there's a... Uh, in 2021, where they're supposed to open the time capsule at the Denver airport that says the New World Order. Oh, really? There's a time capsule. Because I've, I've seen a bunch of documentaries on that, on the Denver airport. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a time capsule there that says do not open until 2021 or something like that. Like, Really? What if it's like a weapon to take out like the <laughs> alien invasion? <laughs> like, a, like a laser bazooka, like the Spartan from Halo? Do you think it could be that planned? Like puppet, puppeted? Dude, I think dude, I think there anything can be... I think it would be a lot easier for a group to control uh, a world's population than people think. I think there's a lot of things you could easily do. If you're at that position where you have all the power yeah. and you've been doing it for a very long time, like for the Rothschilds thing, like that's like one of the, like I don't really know. My, my grandpa used to be really into the Rothschilds. But yeah, but everybody is. You always hear about them in terms of the Illuminati because they have all the money basically. But I mean, they've been on every like side of the war or every side of each war since the Napoleon War or something yeah. like that. And like, I mean, it makes sense, dude. Like, I mean, if you've been in that situation, if you've been at the very top, for that long, yeah, you could do anything. You are so used to doing it. You're so used to manipulating certain things, persuading different groups to do things, giving people money to go do things. Like, dude, money runs the world. Like, you literally pay someone like a million dollars to go do something. Like, here, I'll pay you a million dollars. Go yeah, spin it nothing. off. But you go, you go do this at a certain time, and you'll go to jail for six years. Yeah, especially they would do it. Yeah, yeah. They don't give a shit. They're like, all right. Yeah, especially if there's no um, consequence for doing what you're doing. Like, they wouldn't even declassify... That's what a lot of the documentaries say. They, they were not even going to declassify the information for presidents. Like, they're not going to tell presidents this stuff. Like, presidents are this low on the list in terms of, like, knowledge of that stuff. I mean, I feel like there's just so much... There's so much, like, stuff in our, like, database or, like, computers that, like... 
and artificial intelligence, like so much news and so much data, just so much history. Like you know, Google's coming out with like all this new artificial intelligence. Yeah, well, and the black military operations account for like two hundred billion dollars or something every year yeah. that are just like question, basically <laughs> a question mark, you know, experimental section of the government. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, like you have no idea. But I think that I don't know. I believe that we have a lot. Like crazier technology than we think, I, but it's not provided to us because we aren't ready for it yet. Yeah, but oh, I know. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, how much would people freak out if they're like, aliens are real? What, no, no, what, they, what that's they, they shouldn't tell us that. I, do? I'm completely against yeah. even knowing because, dude, people are already shooting up schools and shit. Yeah, you think yeah. you think telling them, hey, aliens are real? By the way, we've been talking to them for a hundred years. What the yeah. fuck do you think that's gonna cost? You're gonna, you're gonna be a bunch of hicks running around with shotguns, yeah. like you know, going. You're like, schools. guys, like, this isn't a racial thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, this isn't. A, they're, they're from outer space. Yeah, we're just trying to <laughs> unify everybody now. Like, you know, like, but I totally agree. Like, you know, it's probably gonna happen. People are gonna die. Alien invasion. Like, if it does happen, I mean, no, I think I think if I mean, I mean, are. The question they always raise in uh, movies is, are they hostile? You know? That's the ultimate question. I think no. I think they're not, personally. I think, I think if they're smart enough and that much... That if they're more intelligent than they're us... They're not going to be... If they're more intelligent than us and they already know that we're yeah, here, yeah. and they got here, I mean, the last thing they're going to do... And have you ever heard of the zoo hypothesis? Is that about uh, harvesting us? It's about it's about not interacting with us because they would interrupt our uh, evolution. Yeah, or interrupt their like they're experiment. watching. They're watching. Interrupt their experiment. Exactly. Like the final scene of um, I was talking about this. The final season scene of Men in Black is like they zoom way, way out on the Earth, and it's a couple of fucking like octopi, octopi playing like marbles. You know, uh huh. Playing jacks and marbles with you told all, me about this. Just all the planets, and I'm like, oh, that's. What, I mean, is there just some? Are they just using us as an ex, as a? Or is is you mean, the uh, is the Earth just a giant petri dish of experimentation? Probably. I mean, sometimes I don't. Even and think that we takes back here. to like where did alien integration come historically? Because like, did they just drop like you know think about an eyedropper with technology or whatever they gave us energy at some point between monkeys and us? They gave us this drop of like technology, and then they're like, what is this gonna do with? Yeah. Like, what, like if we can't explain how the pyramids were made, that drop is basically that missing link of being like, what the fuck, you know? What happened for us to jump so much so quickly? Yeah, no, I like you don't even like the way we've been advancing lately is like exponential. Like, yeah, it's, it's almost insane. Like, exponential like, and also rever- and I uh, and if because you, you think about it in terms of survival and in terms of like historical, everything that we build now is gonna be trash. We're like even after all of us are gone, the pyramids and all that, all these you know all you know, Mount Rushmore, all that stuff is still gonna be there. Yeah, stuff of the old world will still exist after we are gone. Like pil- buildings will go. Like there's nothing permanent that humans are building right now. Have you seen that 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 one artifact? It's they found it. It's like a hammer, but it's like four hundred thousand years old or some sh- crazy. Yeah, it pushes back the date of the civilization it's, or or a weaponry or whatever you want to call it. It's, it I mean, it, everything that they're, they're finding things that are like pushing. Like the date back, dates back, yeah, back and I like back to call Graham back. Hancock like the modern day Indiana Jones. He's he's so sick. He's the he's like Indiana he's Indiana Jones. He's so dope. Yeah, he's so I dude I personally love the way he thinks because you know he's open to any possibility rather than being a skeptical yeah. like. I remember we were listening to like a fucking podcast when some guy was just questioning everything he was saying. Oh, I, I remember like, that. Yeah, I remember that. Shut the fuck Like, let the man talk for like one second before you ask a question. And he's open because he's opening to changing his mind where these other guys are like really stuck on their opinions. Yeah. And his goal is to be proven. He's His goal is to prove himself wrong. Yeah. You know? You can't argue with somebody like that if they're that yeah. open to changing their hypothesis on things. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like something crazy is going to happen in our lifetime. I used to think like that when I was super into conspiracy I theories. I just hope they... Honestly, I I do not... I used to like be super into the whole, like, oh, I want to know every single conspiracy. I want to know. But at the same time, now that I'm looking back at that, I'm like, dude, I don't even want to fucking know. I mean, I would love to know by myself. Like, I would definitely be... I would be able to handle, like, the truth of any kind of... Conspiracy, but at the same time, I don't think that a lot of people are ready to hear something. Well, then like what that. do you do after you get this information? I mean, depending on the circumstances, you do nothing and don't have money, and you fucking just are sort of like, holy fuck, aliens. I would just kind of like I, I would I would be satisfied hearing that, or like on my deathbed or something. If someone told me, I'd be that would be awesome. Yeah, you know the fact that I like <laughs> you know someone just told me That'd before be a you died, funny ass. Before you die, before you die, aliens are real. <laughs> 
But you'd have to have one there to prove it because you've been told that a million times. There'd have to be an alien with it, your brother. Pull out a smartphone. Yeah, with it's your a real picture. Yeah, with <laughs> your younger brothers there holding your hand. You're like, I brought somebody. Um, Bob was to on. say bye. Yeah. <laughs> Area fifty one. Yeah, I brought fucking uh, Ted the alien. I brought Ted the bear. Call it? Yeah, sure. That was a good one. We fucking went. We went. How long was that? We should do another one, too, because I want to have more funny funnies planned. Dude, yeah, let's get fucked up on one, though. All right, let's call it fucking Zombie Boy. We'll get all zombied out next zombie time. Zombie Boy gets friend zoned. Seth Madeira is Zombie Boy gets friend zoned. Um, take one. Give us a fucking fake laugh. Ha ha ha!